All right, welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Libwit, and this is another video for our series of training materials for Theogen's Terra workflows for SARS-CoV-2 genomic analysis. Today's video is a continuation from our overview of the Mercury workflows. If you haven't watched that video, I highly encourage you to do so to get an overall understanding of the workflows because in this video, we'll be doing a walkthrough tutorial on how to use the Mercury single end prep workflow. Uh, a link to the Mercury overview video is available in the description below. Okay, so with that, let's jump into it. So in this video, we'll be walking through part one of this two-part tutorial. First, I'm going to show you how to use the metadata table formatter to upload sample metadata to your Terra workspace. Then I'm going to show you how to prepare GISAID and GenBank files for each sample individually using the Mercury single end prep workflow. Single end since we'll be working with ClearLabs data in this tutorial. For users working with paired end data, this will all still be very relevant to you as these workflows are nearly identical. The only difference is that you'll need to supply inputs for the reverse read in addition to all the inputs required for the single end workflow. And then in a separate video, we'll continue on to part two to cover how to use the Mercury batch workflow to combine the prepared assemblies and metadata files for batch upload. I'll also go over my process for getting the Mercury output into the required GISA template for batch submission on their platform. Okay, so let's hop on over to Terra and uh, start the tutorial. Okay, so you can see here that I have 10 ClearLab samples in this ClearLab specimen data table. And in a previous video, I showed how to use the Titan Clear Labs workflow to perform consensus assembly, gather QC metrics, and perform lineage and clade typing on five of these samples. I've since went ahead and analyzed the rest of this data set. And if you look here, you can see that I have all of the Titan Clear Labs output available to view in this table. So if we want to pull up specific things, we can go ahead and hit this gear. Go ahead and hit none and pull up some of the interesting metrics here, such as assembly length, unambiguous, maybe the pango lineage and the number of ends. And as you can see from the Titan output alone, I already have available to me some powerful results that can begin to inform some public health action. But now I wanna prepare these samples for submission to GISAID and GenBank. And so the workflows that'll help me out there is the Mercury workflows. So first I wanna run the Mercury prep workflows. And since I'm working with ClearLabs data, I'm going to use the Mercury SE or single end prep workflow. And what Mercury single end prep will do is take in sample reads, assembly and metadata, and then package it all into files ready for GISAID and GenBank submission. And as I just showed you, I have all of the relevant read and assembly data, but there's currently no sample metadata in my Terra environment. So to change that, I'm going to go over to my Terra metadata formatter, an Excel sheet that helps me organize and upload sample metadata. I've included a link to download this same exact formatter in the description below. Before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this table up and make sure that I just have the run IDs and then I'm gonna select everything, and then I'm gonna download this as a TSV. And we'll go ahead and open that up. And now that I have this in Excel, this will be helpful as a reference as I start to fill out the metadata table formatter. Okay, so this is my Terra metadata formatter. And in looking at this table, you can see that there are two sheets. This one here being the user input, and then the second sheet being the Terra data table itself. So the way things work is that users will fill out this front sheet and based on the user inputs, the second sheet will populate as a Terra data table to include all of the information that is added in the first sheet. And so the second sheet with all of the sample metadata can be uploaded directly to Terra. So let's start things out by filling out this user input sheet. Okay, so first is the Terra entity. This should be the same root entity as your data table in Terra. So for us, we want to add this information to the clear lab specimen table. So our Terra entity will be entity colon clear labs underscore specimen underscore ID. And if we check out that other table we just downloaded, we can pull this information directly from this table and paste it into our formatter. Okay, next is the submission ID prefix. 
So when submitting samples to GISAID and GenBank, we suggest submitting using the recommended state-institution-accession number format. So if you use this naming convention, each sample will have the same prefix that indicates your state and institution. So for this example, I'll go ahead and put WA for Washington, hyphen TGN for Fusion, and then include a hanging hyphen there uh, to complete the prefix. Okay, now next is some information about the laboratory and the submitters. So for this submitter field, this needs to be your GISAID username. That is the username you use to log into the platform. So this can't just be my name, Kevin Libwit. Instead, I have to put my GISAID login name. So that's Libwit KG. Okay, and all this other laboratory metadata is pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in with some dummy data for this tutorial. Okay, and so on the next row is metadata for the actual samples themselves. And these blue columns here are the required metadata, and then these orange columns are the optional metadata for submission. So first, I'm going to use that downloaded clear lab sample table again to import these sample identifiers. So I'll go ahead and take these samples, copy them, and paste them here. All right, and I could also fill in the run ID using the same reference table. But since I know this is already information populated to my Terra table, I can go ahead and leave this one blank. All right, next is submission ID. So this will be the accession number that follows the prefix for your submitted file. Some labs choose to just carry over the same identifier that they use for their samples internally. So for example, if we took this approach, this column would be the same exact thing as this column. Other labs implement a secondary decoding, and instead of using the same internal identifiers, they start a new numbering scheme for a submitted file. So, for example, if we took this approach, and these were the first files that we were submitting, I could just add 00001 for sample 1, and 00002 for sample 2, and so on for the rest of this set. And so if you also take this approach, remember that your Terra table itself can act as a sort of de-identifier when trying to match submitted samples with internal accession numbers. Okay, and now we need a collection date for these samples, and they all need to be in that specific year, month, date format. So I'm just gonna go ahead again and fill this with some dummy data. Okay, and these other fields here are just optional metadata. Uh, if you don't have any, you can just leave these all blank, but remember to take out these text placeholders. Uh, and for this, I'm gonna go ahead and start populating more dummy data. Okay, great, so now that we filled out this user input sheet, let's take a look at our Terra data table. And here you can see that this is in a Terra table format with each row representing a sample and each column representing metadata associated with the samples. Oh, and I can see a bit of a problem here. And you can see that entity is entered twice. So I think on the user input sheet, we don't need that entity colon. And taking a second look. Yep, that clears things up there. Okay, so to get this into our Terra workspace, I'm going to go ahead and select all. So control A and then copy everything, control C, and then get back to our Terra environment. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus button, and I'm gonna to go to text import, and I'll paste this here, and hit upload. All right, and there you go. So just like that, we've uploaded all of the relevant metadata to our Terra workspace. And so now that we have the reads, assembly, and sample metadata available to us, we can move forward with the Mercury single end prep workflow to prepare the GISAID and GenBank files for each sample individually. So to do that, as a reminder, we're going to select the proper workflow, define the inputs and outputs for that workflow, and then just hit run analysis. Okay, so let's start this off by first selecting the appropriate workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to my workflows. And you can see here that I have already available to me the Mercury single end prep workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and select the latest version that I have available and this is 1.3.2 and then now I'm going to start defining the inputs and outputs for this workflow. So let's first select the root entity type and for us it is this clear lab specimen. And you can see here by default Tear will assume that we want to run this workflow for all samples within that data table. In our case this is exactly what we want but if we only wanted a specific few samples to analyze we can go ahead and hit select data and choose specific rows to process. And you can use this search bar to filter our table by, for example, run date. Okay, but in our case, we won't be touching anything here since we want to prepare submission files for all 10 samples. Okay, now that I've selected which samples to analyze, I need to further define which elements of those samples should be fed in as inputs to the Mercury single end prep workflow. And as you can see, there are many required inputs most of which are the metadata fields that we just uploaded. And some of these, uh, for example, assembly method, are metadata outputs from the Titan workflow that we use to analyze these samples. And so we need to tell Terra which column in our data table that these data exist so that it can be pulled in properly to the GenBank and GIS8 submission files. Luckily, most of these input requirements have a corresponding column header to pull from, from our data table. And so this should be relatively straightforward with just a few gotchas. Okay, so for assembly method, we're just gonna go here and type this.assembly method. And so that's gonna be the same for most of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling these out. Okay, so now at sample name, there is no column in our Terra table called sample name. This information instead is under the clear lab specimen ID column. So here we're going to go ahead and type this dot clear lab specimen ID. And we can keep going from there. And sequence, similarly to sample name, doesn't have a corresponding one to one column to pull from. Instead, for sequence, we're going to go ahead and put this dot assembly fast A and continue on. Okay, so these are all of the required inputs completely filled out. And so what about those optional metadata fields? If, and so if you remember from our metadata formatter, these orange inputs in the Terra formatter were optional. And this is also true for the Mercury prep workflow. These are optional inputs. So if we want these data to be populated in our final GenBank and GSA files, we need to add these as well. And so for gender, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to gender and type this.gender and do the same thing for patient age and also county information. Okay, and that's everything for inputs. So now I'm gonna go over and move on to outputs. And for this and pretty much every workflow, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit select use defaults and allow it to populate the default outputs. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and then run analysis. And so as this job is running, I also wanted to go back to this workflow page and mention that since I saved this input and output formatter, all of these elements are saved. So the next time I run this workflow, I don't have to go back and fill out every input and output field again. Instead, all of this information will be ready to go for the next analysis. Okay, now that the Mercury prep workflow is done, let's go ahead and check out the new outputs to our Terra data table. Okay, so looking back at our data table, you can see that GenBank assembly and metadata, as well as GISAID assembly and metadata files were generated for most samples. And these two samples that don't have these output generated, you can see that they exceed that 5,000 ends in their consensus genome assembly. Therefore, no repository files were generated for these samples. And if we just go ahead and take a peek at one of these files, download it here and just open it up to view 
you can see that things have been formatted for just a submission. And so in part two of this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the Mercury batch workflow to combine these outputs for batch upload. But for now, this is all I have. I hope that this was clear for everyone and that you were able to learn a little bit from this video. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and we will be sure to clarify as much as we can. Thank you and I will see you in the next one.